Hello everyone, Creative Fun here, back again with another video. And as you can see by the title, uh, the topics for discussion this time is going to be a little bit different than my usual content. And the reason for this is that I've seen uh, a lot of opinions and discussion around uh, early access product, beta products, and the kind of the expectations the users have versus what the developers are giving the users, and the kind of experience around that. And it seems to be a general misunderstanding really about what you can expect from an early access or beta product, even if you pay money for it. So I just want to sit down with everyone who's interested in, in um, uh, finding out what these, uh, this terminology actually means and uh, what kind of expectations you can have and probably what kind of expectations the developer has when they say it's a beta or early access. So before we get started, I do want to mention two things. Uh, number one, I really love the DCS community. It's a fantastic community uh, with a lot of good and friendly people. And uh, it's these good and friendly people I've seen becoming more and more frustrated with the way, uh, with, with their expectations versus what the developers' expectations are on products that are perhaps not completed, and uh, what and, and their understanding of, of this uh, open beta, beta early access, and so on. And I really just feel I want to give something back to the community. And this is the reason why I keep making videos on YouTube, uh, because there actually seems to be people who enjoy watching them and can learn from them. So I'm hoping this will be one of those videos. Number two, uh, I used to work in the gaming industry. I used to work for a game company, and I'm actually still in the gaming industry technically since I work as a teacher uh, of game graphics and computer animation for games. So I had a lot of co-workers, uh, uh, friends still in the industry, and actually some students now entering the industry as well. So what I'm saying is based on fact and experience uh, in terms of these, the terminology around, around alpha and beta. Uh, in addition to that, I do need to mention also that uh, each company has their own kind of definition of alpha and beta and early access. It's not a, a set terminology with rules that everyone follows. It's very much up to the developer to determine what is alpha and what is not alpha. There's no absolute clear line. What I'm going to tell you guys about is kind of like a generalization uh, and a little bit about what the developer expect when they or, or their expectations around what when they talk about alpha and beta and early access and so on so let's get started number one uh, we're going to start with alpha and I think this for DCS users this is most commonly uh, the most common thing you think about is uh, the old uh, open alpha uh, where we had the Nevada uh, map and then we had the open beta which was the Caucasus map so that's kind of like the relationship most users in DCS have with alpha and beta uh, and uh, I think that has warped a little bit their understanding about what alpha is. Uh, recently it's not being used so much in the DCS community however it's still being used a lot in the gaming industry so I'm just going to talk a little bit about alpha means uh, compared to beta as well. So first and foremost uh, Alpha, uh, an alpha version is om used to be, but still is almost always an internal version of the game, something that's not been released or shown to the public. Uh, of course, this changed a little bit, especially smaller uh, game companies do like to, to show like pre-release alpha footage and so on. It's how the terminology can go. But generally, alpha uh, is a version of a game um, that uh, lacks core features. When you make a game, usually you have like kind of like the core features uh, from for what you need to have a, f a product, and then you have a wish list or like a additional features that you want to add. So core features is an absolute must for it to actually be a product for be a, to be a game that you are planning to make, and then. Uh, you have additional features uh, or wish list that uh, things you want to add into your product. So uh, when we talk about alpha, uh, that means a product that lacks these core features, some or all of them. Uh, usually in an alpha version there will be virtually no uh, QA, quality assurance, and uh, there will of course be a lot of bugs and it might not be a fully functional game at all. It just means that kind of like you got stuff up and running, you got maybe some a couple of core features in the game, uh, which means that it's uh, perhaps not even playable, but at least you can kind of see how it's turning into a game. 
that was alpha mean it's like before you even have all the core features in a game for dcs and a flight simulator that could be for example that you don't have uh, completed you don't have uh, art assets you might use uh, like a uh, stand-in assets for example a good example is uh, hitler's f18 uh, f4 f14 uh, tomcat the chrome cat they usually when they show their their uh, pre-release footage they have like this very gray <laughs> or chrome cat as it calls a very much a non a completed 3d model of the tomcat and that's kind of like an alpha state of that uh, the same could be like for a, a hud display might not be implemented properly or you might not even have a clickable cockpit yet and so on or the flight model may, may only be based on a very simple flight model uh, moving on uh, we have the beta now this is the thing that I think people uh, ca cause the most irritation among our uh, our community because generally people think of beta as kind of like, you know, uh, a completed product that may have some bugs and that's not entirely true. S so beta can be broken down into different types of categories uh, used by most gaming uh, companies. Uh, number one is an internal beta. Now, internal beta will usually refer to something that's only used inside the company, shown inside the company. And uh, then you might have closed beta. Closed beta is usually the terminology you use uh, for uh, a beta product that's getting ready to be released, but it's not time yet to release it to the public. But you might send it out to maybe some reviewers, maybe some game testers outside of the company. Very often a closed beta is something that a few people outside the company is playing and checking out. Public beta on the other uh, side is uh, where everyone might have access to it. A public beta is usually free. Uh, this is very, very common that when you release a public beta, it's free to download and try it. In some cases, it might be paid access, uh, but more often than not, public beta usually refer to a free version of an uncompleted game uh, that everyone uh, can just download and test for themselves and report bugs. And then finally, we have open beta, which is the terminology that DCS uses. And, and basically, it's the same as public beta in this case. So what does beta actually mean? Well. Once again, this is a little bit up to the game company to decide and not really up to the uh, users to decide. Um, but generally speaking, uh, beta usually refers to a product which has the core features but still lack many of the wish list or additional features. It can also be a lot buggy. It usually has not have a lot of uh, quality assurance. And generally the, the point of beta is to quality assure a uh, game. So when a game enters beta, that's when you start testing for bugs or, or making sure or ironing out everything so it becomes as a good product as possible. So depending on where you are in the beta stage, you can have early beta, which of course means that the beta stage has just started. It's just gone from alpha to beta or late beta as a version that's almost uh, becoming com uh, feature complete and ready for release. In this span, usually you do quality assurance. This is when you have your QA testers, either internal or public, or you can have like a closed uh, but outside of company uh, QA testers. You can invite some people from the community to test out certain features and then receive bug report. And here I believe is where the most of the confusion comes from. When you start using a beta product, uh, everything is still subject to change essentially a lot of things can be tweaked weapons can be removed replaced the whole point of for most developers in dcs is to make us a true to life representation of the aircraft uh, or terrain that they are developing and that means that sometimes as information becomes available or as they are made aware of information certain things will change a very good example for this is rasp and removing certain maverick versions from the harrier uh, because the u.s marine corps simply do not use those versions with the harrier and that's completely up to the developer so if you are uh, using a beta product uh, really complaining about features missing or being removed or changed is kind of, for me, is very strange. I understand if you think that the f features that the, uh, that the module uh, is delivered uh, with suddenly disappears. I can understand from a point, from a user perspective, that it might feel a little bit strange. But from a developer's pers perspective, it's completely normal that you remove and add features as the beta process goes along. 
And this is where I believe that a lot portion, large portion uh, or default lies very much with the developers uh, in DCS, both uh, the third party and uh, Eagle Dynamics. Uh, they're very bad at uh, explaining what their expectations of beta is. And they're very bad informing their customers when they pay for access to an early beta or uh, early access. I'm going to talk about early access a little bit more in just a second. But when you pay for something, you kind of expect it to be, you know, the product you paid for. But when you pay for early access or like a beta product, this is you have actually not paid, you actually haven't received your product yet. You're just receiving a representation of what the product might become or are on the way to becoming. Uh, so uh, I hope that at least clears up a little bit what beta is. It is essentially uh, core features are usually in the beta and uh, you're starting to add additional features and features to your wish list features or, or like, you know, you know, the things you want to add uh, to make this as feature complete as possible. Uh, during beta, uh, that's when quality assurance starts. So if you are very early in the beta process, uh, or if you're allowed to use a product that's very early in the beta process, uh, there's most likely been very little quality assurance which means it's not been tested very much uh, so usually you are kind of expected and uh, expected you, you can kind of expect a lot of bugs a lot of features uh, missing or not working properly and so on so let's move over to early access which is a little bit different from beta and alpha. Generally, early access allows you to pay a certain amount of money to access a product that's not completed yet. Generally, when you pay to access the product, you are also going to receive the product um, once it becomes uh, well out of beta. Once it becomes once it's released. So one thing which is very important to remember here is that when you receive access to a beta or alpha version, when you pay for early access. It means that uh, you are not receiving your product yet. What you're do what you're receiving now is access to an unfinished product that has not been released yet, and that's how the developer sees it. So being upset that something is not working in early access is also for me very strange since I work in the gaming industry because uh, we kind of think of that as pretty obvious that things will not work or it might break things that you didn't expect purposefully or, or deliberately buying a product that is early access and with, with no fixed release date for the 1.0 release, like full release, uh, then you're taking a risk. If you don't feel comfortable with your product changing, uh, with features being changed or removed as the development process goes along, then early access may not be for you. Even if it feels like you have to wait longer, uh, it might be frustrating you want to have access to the product immediately, and that's usually why early access is so popular these days, because it gives you a it gives both the developers a chance to earn money and the user a chance to get hands-on with the product much earlier. One thing to think about with early access is that if you pay for early access and you start flying uh, a model that's not completed yet, then you are essentially becoming quality assurance, QA. Uh, developers expect uh, uh, users to complain about bugs, to, to do bug reports and so on, because that will help them get the module done faster. Uh, quality insurance is usually a very lengthy and very costly uh, thing to do. And leaving that uh, quality assurance over to the users, which can do it in greater numbers much more efficiently because they will test the module uh, in ways that perhaps developers even ha haven't thought about, means that they can get the product done quicker. Usually that's what early access implies in terms of quality assurance. And then also you can ask yourself, why release an early access? Why not release a fully featured, complete module immediately? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, it's a very nice way to earn money. Quality insurance is very expensive, and uh, earning money at the same time as you have your users doing the quality assurance from you is very good business practices. You, it's, it's very good in terms of economics for a, especially a small game company. Uh, and uh, don't forget that uh, simulators uh, like DCS is very niche product. We are not that many. This, this is not triple A level amount of people buying uh, the sim and the amount of money that uh, the developers can earn is, you know, is very limited compared to like Call of Duty or Battlefield and so on. Another reason why developers might want to release an early access is also the pressure from the users. You, if you go onto the DCS Facebook groups or even the forums, you can see how many users just want you to release the product. They don't care what state it is. They just take my money and give me my product, period. 
this pressure, of course, gets to developers because they want to release the module while it's still relevant, while people are still talking about it. Hype. Uh, and as long as their product is hyped and people are excited for it, uh, they are more likely to pay for it. So the earlier they can release it, especially when people are talking about it, even if it's not complete, uh, generates more money, generates more copies sold for the uh, developer, even if it in the end means that they have to take a lot of heat and a lot of criticism, uh, depending on how many bugs and issues the uh, product has. Also, uh, one thing, uh, my final point here I do want to talk about is the part about being upset. Now, everyone is entitled to be upset. If you buy an early access product and something doesn't meet your expectations of that product, uh, of course you can be upset about it. If a weapon that you have uh, on your in your aircraft module inventory and suddenly that's removed and you really like to use that weapon, of course that means that the experience for you has been worsened or, or it's less than it was before. And of course that's cause for being upset. The point I'm trying to make is it's kind of counterproductive uh, to be upset or be angry about something that is essentially not finished. You're buying it with the premise that it is not finished, that it will most likely change. And uh, when it changes or when it's not finished, or when a bug makes it impossible for you to, to, to use that product because of some change that's been made, being upset about it uh, is counterproductive. It makes no sense, really. If you want to be, up, if you don't want to be upset, if you don't like being upset by a product not working, then wait until it's released in 1.0. You might have to wait one year, two year, three year, four years, or God knows how long. The product might never be finished. Uh, but if you don't buy into an early access, uh, at least in a perfect world, you don't have to worry too much about bugs or features not being in there. Then, of course, you know if. Um, you buy a 1.0 product, uh, product or like a product that is released in its complete state and then you find bugs and then features are changed or removed. That's when you need to be upset. That's when you need to start writing angry rants on Facebook and e forums. That's when you need to see what legal recourse you have. So that's kind of the, uh, the view or like the, the point of view of the developers, how they are working. And uh, it's too bad that DCS uh, developers are really bad at communicating the expectations for these early access and these uh, beta products. So I hope this has been sort of useful video. I know it's a kind of long rant, uh, but I do believe it's kind of important because as I see the expectations between developers and, and, uh, and users are, are drifting apart more and more, I do kind of want to just do my part in trying to explain what's going on here. Anyway, if you managed to make it all the way to the end of this video, huge thanks for watching and listening to my rambling. And I hope the video footage I eventually will edit in uh, behind this, com this commentary was entertaining enough for you. And uh, please don't, don't unsubscribe, uh, but do subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to hit the like button if you liked what you heard and saw. And if you didn't like what you heard and saw, uh, the other button seems to work as well. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Creative fun checking out.